Nomad is only one of a number of ways that you can sculpt in 3D. And obviously I started my career with ZBrush and I'm still a ZBrush user every day. So Blender's come along and has got as just an amazing set as ZBrush. So this video is all about what are the main differences between Nomad Sculpt and ZBrush, which is, as I've already said, my main tool. So let's just list off some of the things that you can see as a main difference. Okay, so I'm gonna dive straight in with my number one main reason that um, there's a big difference between ZBrush and Nomad. Now, uh, ZBrush has recently been updated with Redshift, so that's a render engine for those of you that don't know, and it means that you can render your images to, to a much higher standard than we could before but it still doesn't have what we can see here, which is real-time rendering. So obviously Nomad has got this post-process system here, which gives us live um, uh, uh, ways to, to, to improve the, the look of an image. So it's got things like ambient occlusion, depth of field, um, loads and loads of things that, were, that, that are quite common in a lot of, of the, the real-time programs, but here we have it in a sculpting program. Now in ZBrush, you obviously have some amazing render capabilities and lighting capabilities more so now with redshift but you can't move it around live and that is a you know a huge huge benefit when you're trying to get the look of a model right so a real-time render solution for ZBrush would be probably one of my number one requests for Maxon to, to add to ZBrush so a second big difference between ZBrush and Nomad is what's called voxel remeshing versus Dynamesh. Now, let me just show you for those that don't know what, what voxel remeshing is. So if I take a sphere um, like this one here and I'll just delete the lower resolution. So that means this is the, the what you can see there now is the, the level of polygons, not subdivided up or down. And if I just take um, clone, that means I've got two of them now and bring them together like um, so. And then what we can do is we can select them both and join them. Now they they are in the same um, model, but they're not combined to, to the fact that they're welded together here. And the way we do that in Nomad is we use this, which is um, in the geometry panel here, and you've got the second one along voxel, and you can set a slider here that you can see it getting bigger and smaller as I scroll, and that's basically a grid. Now, I, I've done a video in the past about voxels, um, but basically this is a grid that, that you know, basically you put your model inside. Once you've, you've decided to call voxel, um, remeshing, then it puts it in a grid. So the bigger these these suggested squares here, the smaller the, the or the reduced amount of, of, of polygons that you're going to get. So let me just give you an example. So that's just 11. I'll do a remesh. And you can see there what it's done. It's made it super low res and it's welded them together in the center. So effectively, that is the same as um, ZBrush. So let me just do it one more time. Double tap, undo, and then we'll look at them again. So we'll go same panel and then we'll remesh it, but we'll make that a lot slower. And that grid now is a lot sm smaller. So we'll now do remesh and you can see there it's done that weld around the seam um, and they're two welded items. So if I was to smooth them now, so if I just, if I go to clay brush, large and then hold smooth, you can see that it smooths that join. Now, effectively, that's exactly the same as Dynamesh in terms of the output. It's very different technology, um, but, but what, it, what it gives you as an output is pretty much the same result. So if you can see here in ZBrush, I take two spheres, merge them together. So basically bring the two sub tools together into one and merge them into one. And then I would use Dynamesh. And with Dynamesh, I can set the slider exactly the same as the voxel remesh. And then it gives me this output, which is this effectively the same. Now there's more triangles in this than there is in, um, in the Nomad version, um, but it's effectively the same. So it, it, it really makes no difference. So these are pretty much one for one the same things in the two programs. So one where ZBrush definitely has Nomad B is ZSphere. So this is me attempting to make something that's like ZSphere's here in Nomad. So in, in, in ZBrush, I'll show you in a moment, you string together w what look like spheres to make an articulated rig. And I'll show you that in a moment. But in Nomad, we don't get anything like that. This is simply just a curve tool. So if you look here, 
I've got a curve tool like so. And what it's doing is it's allowing me to bend it like this. So it's okay um, um, to, you know, to, to, to make something like this which is a shape that i want but it's not good it's not dynamic um and it it, it could be way way better because i'm simply just making the curve tool work um in the same sort of weight as these spheres and um, you can also do this with the tube tool which works way better and i'm due to do a video on that next um however switch over to Z, a Z brush and you see the power of um, Z spheres. Now you can string together um, anything you want in terms of a shape and you can then use it as if it is rigged. It's got like almost like an um, a, a, like a forward kinematic uh, or an IK uh, or FK. I can't remember which one it is in this case, but basically if you move the thigh, then the, the calf moves and the foot moves. If you move an arm, the hand moves and you can pose things much, much better um, using Z-spheres. So it definitely is an improvement uh, on what Nomad has currently got. Um, I love Z-spheres, I've loved it since it, it's been around for a long, long time now, probably 15 years. Um, and, and it is one of the best ways to make shapes when you want to just get, you know, block out shapes really, really quickly. The only way I know faster than Z-Spheres is to use VR. And again, that's going back to voxel technology. So, yeah, I think on this one, ZBrush hands down has the winner. Now, the next one is about something called polygroups. Now, we don't have these in Nomad, and it's a real shame because it would make such a big difference. So if you look at a, a, a model like this, so this is just a, um, a, a set of uh, model pieces that are in a hierarchy inside of Nomad. Now, that is brilliant. Um, this would be a good one to have in in. Um, ZBrush, where one is parented to another in the same way as this. Now, ZBrush has its own way of, of doing that, but what, what we can't do, or what, what, and what I'd want to do, is take one piece, like say, for example, this shell. So if I was to hit solo, and I've just got the shell there, I would like that to be separated into separate pieces. So if I put the wireframe on, I, I've got no way of knowing, um, the, the, or no, no separation, other than um, uh, th this is one single piece. So I, c I can't break off, for example, the top into one group and the bottom into another group. And it probably would be better if I switch to a, um, a figure or a creature. So here, for example, what I might want to do is if you look at how many models it is, so it's, it's actually just one model. So the entire thing is one group there. I'll just bring the light around so you can see it a bit better. But what I might want is a way to separate the face from the neck and maybe separate the neck from, um, from the horns. So yes, it would all be one model, but it would have separate um, groupings so that I can isolate it. I can change the material on an area. Um, with masking, I can I, I can you know pose it, and it, it doesn't have that kind of grouping that I would want. So here you can see in ZBrush you can literally group anything. So you can group um, little small groups, you can group with UVs, which is super useful. So that's the, the, the coordinates that we use to unwrap and to texture a model. Um, and then sometimes when you're modeling, having UVs means you can change the grouping. So that, that flexibility is what you need for production level work. And we, and we don't have that in Nomad yet. Um, so again, hands down here, ZBrush, you know, it, it wins. Blender, pretty much exactly the same. Um, you know, the, the, the Blender and ZBrush and um, things like um, Modo and um, Cinema 4D to some degree, their they're, um, sculpting um, technical tools are, are way, way above Nomad. Whereas Nomad has, you know, it probably wins on on the the, the more useful aesthetic things, like I've already said, like real time rendering. But in terms of this, which is called polygrouping, then this one goes to ZBrush. So the next big difference is brushes. So in um, Nomad, I did a video last week about brushes and how to customize brushes. So you can tap on any brush now and you can clone it and rename it and then make your own settings. Well, that's great, but it doesn't have the flexibility yet of the larger sculpting programs. So um, you, you can change settings, you can change things like the stroke settings on these brushes and you can really get going. But 
ZBrush and Blender both have a, a, a massive plethora of brushes. Uh, a couple that I'll tell you that, that I absolutely couldn't do without our first one is Dam Standard. So that's the same as Crease in, um, or at least it's an, it, it's, you know, Crease is, does a similar job in Nomad. But, but Dam Standard works so much better. It doesn't crease over the geometry and, and fold it in, in a messy way. What it actually does is just scores into the surface in, in, in the way that you want it to work. The second one on a second batch of, of, of brushes uh, out of out of the hundreds that are now available in ZRush is cloth. So you've got cloth nudge, cloth, you know, twist, you know, pull. You basically you can do anything you want with cloth and it and it responds just like cloth. Again, the same with Blender. That's got an amazing set of cloth brushes. Um, but the, the you know, Nomad is a is a, a much newer product. You know, it's it's only a few years in development with, with one developer. Um ZBrush is a fully rounded sculpting and painting package with you know well over two decades um under its belt so you know you wouldn't expect to have this level of complexity of brushes but the you know the zbrush brushes are fantastic and and hopefully here's hoping you know blender comes up with a new version where the sculpting can can match it because its brushes are fantastic it just can't handle the the, the level of you know the level of polygons um, for a production finished um, piece or a production model. So hence why a lot of people like me do most of our work in, in ZBrush. Okay, let's talk about learning curve. So this one, I'll tell you straight off the bat, and this is, this is from literally 23 years of training ZBrush. The learning curve in Nomad is significantly less. So if you just want to learn to sculpt, you literally can dive in and in one day you can be up and running and sculpting without worrying too much. And I can teach people to do that quite easily. That's what our Nomad Beginners course does, teaches you in no time at all. Uh, ZBrush, on the other hand, has got some incredibly frustrating ways of doing things, and it always has done so. It was what's called a 2.5D program, and it came through a very different um, development path than, than programs like Maya or Lightwave or or even things like Photoshop or anything like that. Um, and and it, you, you, people really do struggle to learn ZBrush unless they're taught the basics first. You can get there, and a lot of people have done it on their own just by you know, doing YouTube videos, but generally speaking, it's much, much, much faster to get someone to teach you all the funny little things like make polymesh 3D or you can't sculpt or what happens when you drop to canvas and it messes up and you and you need to clear that. These these little things are, are the, the, the really niggly things along with the interface which to me isn't a problem but to a lot of people that I train they still tell me that ZBrush's interface is still impenetrable and um, you know if you learn how to configure it which and it's a fully configurable interface it, it makes a big difference but when you don't know what you don't know then it's difficult so um, learning curve without a doubt the big difference here is that Nomad is way 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 easier. So the last one I'll mention is uh, power, and this is um, this is quite simple, really. So this is a mobile device. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, mine, which is the highest level one, um, and it's got an M1 Apple chip. Now compare that to ZBrush, which can have whatever your PC or Mac can hold. So you can be talking 128 gig of RAM, and you can get into the you literally can get into the hundreds of millions of polygons if you if you factor in all the different sub tools. So. So power and um, production and, and, and being able to handle multi-million polygon models is, is well in the, in the realm of ZBrush, you know, rather than Nomad. Now, having said that, I find that Blender cannot handle anywhere near the level of polygons that Nomad can. Now, that blew my mind when I first started to see it. So I was doing 30 million polygon models in uh, on the iPad. And I couldn't handle that model in uh, Blender, which was r really quite eye-opening, as, as I say. Um, in in ZBrush, it would handle it without batting an eye. And you might say, well, you know, you know, you should really have your models optimized. And there's lots of things we can teach that would would you know would improve that, and you wouldn't need so many polygons. But sometimes you just need raw polygons to be able to get models to a very very high standard that you might want to use for concept art or for 3D printing then you need a lot of polygons at some stage, even if you're gonna bring it down. So obviously, without a shadow of a doubt, you know, Z ZBrush is, 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 a, is a clear, far and away winner on, on that one. 
Um, Nomad is good, but it certainly is not a ZBrush. Um, and I, I suppose the way to the way for me to end this um, video is to say. I, I teach this professionally. I, t I teach Nomad. I teach ZBrush. You know, and I, I use Blender. I don't teach it. Um, and and I think one of the best paths into digital sculpting or being able to do sculpting is through Nomad Sculpt. Um, and that isn't because I sell courses. That is truly what I believe. I do love Blender. I do like the that you know Blender has got so many features that are just. You know, they, they outshine even Maya in a lot of cases. Um, but when I just want to be able to teach someone to sculpt, it's great just to put them on an iPad and use something as powerful as Nomad. Um, not everyone will agree with me on that. And if you want anything to do with uh, component modeling, so that's face, polygon, and edge modeling, then obviously Nomad is dead in the water for you. And ZBrush, uh, almost dead in the water, but it's got Z Modeler, which is, you know, if you so if you look at people like Joseph Drust, who does all the videos or did all the videos for Z Modeler, you can see that it's a super powerful low polygon modeler, but neither of them compare to programs like Blender and Maya for true polygon modeling. And now, actually, we do have a polygonal modeler on the iPad with, with Forger app, um, but I do find that quite buggy. I still don't I still haven't managed to get a decent full video out for you yet about um, polygonal modeling on, on the iPad, but I'm sure that's just around the corner. I hope you're enjoying these videos, and if you are, please give this one a thumbs up. It does help us to get our work in front of other people who like this kind of work. Don't forget that we're basically upgrading our entire Nomad Beginners course in on the 4th of July, so look out for that. If you've already got our course, you get the full entire new course for free, and we'll upload a new course alongside that as well, a creature course, so please look out for that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one.